This lesson is an explanation of the Linux operation modes. The fundamental operating mode of Linux is determined at boot time, but it can actually be changed to any of the other modes while Linux is running. But the changes are drastic and something you need to avoid unless you have a really good reason to make such a change. When your Linux system boots, it does so by running a program named init. Init starts by reading its instructions from a file named etc init tab. This is a plain ASCII file, but it's not a script file. It contains a list of fundamental configuration settings. Now these comments toward the top of the file lists all of the available run levels. Linux always runs in one of these levels. Switching to level 0 will shut the system down so you can turn it off. Switching to run level 6 will shut the system down and then immediately start a reboot sequence. Run level 1 is often used if you have a system with multiple users and you need to do something, some system maintenance, but prevent anyone from logging in except at the system console. It doesn't seem to be done much anymore, but Linux is perfectly capable of supporting a number of directly connected terminals. Most logins occur these days from another computer on the network. Run Level 2 is a fully operational system in all respects, except that you cannot mount disks over the network. Also, no remote computer can remotely mount the disks of this system. Run Level 3 is a fully operational Linux. At the console, which on a PC is the keyboard and CRT, you'll have several virtual terminals available. These are character terminals, not graphics terminals, and you can use the function keys to switch among the logins that you may have active. From these virtual terminals, you can log in as the same user or as different users. Run level 4 is not used, but run level 5 is probably the one that's most used today. This is the graphics mode. The CRT displays a graphics login prompt and you can log into the sessions that use the X server that display windows and manages graphics. This can be done in any one of several graphics interfaces built on top of X, but the most popular ones today are GNOME and KDE. There's much more about how X works in a later lesson. This is the default. This system is set to come up by default in run level 5. If you want your system to come up in a different run level, all you have to do is change this 5 to the run level you prefer. However, you must be careful never to set it to 0 or 6 because it will never boot. It will just come up for a moment and go right back down. Next comes the system initialization line. This is an instruction to execute the scripts named rc.sysinit in the etc directory named rc.d. Notice how those letters rc keep showing up in the names of scripts that have to do with one-time system initializations. That's sort of a tradition. In the earlier days of Unix, there was only one initialization script and it was run whenever the system booted. It was in the etc directory and it was named rc, which was short for run command. It was named that because it contained all of the commands that should run when the system was started. Now these are all commands to run a script named rc, which is in the rc.d directory. The first number on the line is just an ID number for the line. The second number is the run level, so the script will only be run for the correct run level. Notice that the run level is also the argument passed to the rc script when it's executed. The update daemon is started. This is a program that runs in the background and takes care of paging stuff in and out of virtual memory. Not only does it run, but it has a partner it runs named bdflush, and it also gets started with this same command. Now, you know the hardware of a PC responds to the Control-Alt-Delete keys by rebooting. The Linux response to this hardware characteristic is to execute a program that intercepts the interrupt and prevents this from happening. You can change the option on the shutdown command and have it do something else if you prefer. For example, you could have it do a clean shutdown of the system by switching run levels. The UPS entry runs shutdown just like the previous entry. You can have shutdown take various actions when the UPS reports a power failure. 
In rune levels 2, 3, 4, and 5, several Gettys are started. A Getty is a program that listens to a TTY port for someone to start a login. When you come across a terminal anywhere that is connected to any type of Unix system and you see a login prompt, it's a Getty program that set up that prompt that is waiting for some input. It's a bit more complicated than that, but that's the gist of it. At the very bottom of the script is the running of a program named PREFDM. Now notice that it only gets started in run level 5, the run level of the X server, the graphics level. This is the program that puts up the login window and graphically prompts for your login. Well, to be more accurate, this is the program that starts the program that prompts for the login, but you get the idea. Now you see what happens at the very beginning, when Linux first gets started. We're going to take a look into those rc.d directory files in the next lesson.